Welcome, guys, to another episode of Versus, the show where I take one champion and pin them up against another champion, typically in Hydra, to see who's going to do more damage. And today, you guys wanted to see Thor versus Rathalos. So we have Thor, and we've got Rathalos. We're going to put them in Hydra together and see who comes out on top. I saw this meme on Reddit, how I feel right now after months using Rathalos as my only damage dealer. And it's Andy from Toy Story dropping Rathalos and picking up Thor, saying, I don't want to play with you anymore. Now, power creep is something within the gaming sphere altogether that happens quite often. Games will release a champion who is really strong only to nerf them, pseudo nerf them, if you will, later on. Meaning they're introducing new mechanics or new units into the game that supersedes or makes past characters or units less powerful or obsolete. For an example, Taurus, he was the tip top of Arena for like two years with Marishka. Then they introduced mythical champions, Armands, King Narses. Taurus just isn't as powerful as he once was. And this is typical for nukers. Support champions normally have a longer lifespan in terms of being viable and at the top. But in most games that I've played, it's the nukers that tend to lose their value, their power value over a lifespan. Now, Rathalos is still a great champion to have. I still think you can make another Hydra team with him. Here are the specific pieces of gear, rocking him in Savage and Cruel for some ignore defense mechanics. Crit damage with HP flat. I'm going to rework that, but I don't have the materials right now. I have to farm Sand Devil and Phantom Shogun. So you're going to see down here, I, I just I can't fully ascend these yet. And then attack on the chest, speed on speed, attack, and some survivability here. Crit damage with crit damage. Again, uh, I want to max this out, but I just can't right now. And then attack. Here are the total stats. He's not as squishy as Thor, so I didn't worry too much about his survivability, but we still put some in there. Most nukers that I have, 40,000 is the minimum that I require, and then 3,000 is the minimum I want for my nukers as well. We've got 6,100 on the attack, 225 for the speed, 100% crit rate, and 277 for crit damage. For those who don't know, is A1, attacks one time, decreases defense, can't be resisted against bosses. A2, every second hit is going to be an AoE. So the first hit is just a, a one hitter. And then the second time he uses it, every second time is going to be an AoE. Ignores 100% target defense if it's a boss, which Hydra is. AoE is A3. But before attacking, self buffs. His passive inflicts more damage against those who are under HP burn, receives less damage from enemies under HP burns. Every fifth skill is going to deal 200% more damage. We're going to go into the fight with HP burner with Venus, a reliable HP burner. Uh, Heaven cast. So every buff that Rathalos has, he's going to do more damage, an extra 1% damage for each buff. And here are the masteries taking counterattack on this side and the typical nuking masteries to helm smasher on this side. And then Thor is going to be in a Slayer set. Uh, we've we've shown this build a few times already, so I'm not gonna dive too much into it, but it's your typical damage nuker stats that you're looking for. And we have survivability put in because Thor is a squishy champion. I'm too scared to rework this, but ideally you would want crit damage on the amulet, more defense, and a little extra speed and survivability here. Here are the total stats for Thor, 55,000 HP, 3,400 defense, almost 6K attack, 230 speed, and a lot more crit damage than Rathalos. And we have to consider a little bit of accuracy. Now we don't need too much accuracy, but we need just enough to be able to place debuffs. Reason being is because nature's wrath gives him an increase to damage for every successful debuff that he places. That boost is up to 15% of overall damage. And the reason we don't need too much accuracy is because he has a permanent decrease of res on each enemy up to 50%. Now going up against the Hydra heads when they get decapitated, this resets, but it's still something to consider, especially when you know that Thor is going to be taking a lot of moves and doing this quite a bit. So let's go over his skills for anybody who doesn't know, but I'm pretty sure we all know. We'll skim over it. Attacks one enemy, 20% chance to repeat. So sometimes you're going to see like four numbers pop up whenever Thor does any damage. Decreases target's turn meter, doesn't apply to Hydra. AoE, it's not an AoE though. This is confusing for anybody who doesn't know. This is coded as a single hitter, something closer to Masha Led. Attacks one enemy and then 
throws the hammer, Mjolnir will go around hitting the other enemies. Kind of a good thing, so that Hydra heads that have something, a mechanic against AoEs, for an example, like decrease the damage received by 50% from AoEs, this is going to totally bypass that. It's going to hit one enemy, and every enemy after that is going to get hit even harder. So it's going to increase by 25% up to 100%. So the last enemy is going to receive the full force of Mjolnir. His A3 is an AoE before attacking just like Rathalos, but, you know, different buffs. And then we talked about the res and the decrease speed. Passive every time he deals damage. And let's talk about this part. Every time he deals damage, it's only from damage that's directly coming from him. Anything coming from sets isn't going to add to his thunder counter. I know that the discussion of, oh, well, Slayer set might proc and add to his thunder counter. So he'd be just, he's going to cycle through everything super fast. But no, it's only things that are coming from his skills. And somebody correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I think it was a bug that Giant Slayer or like War Master would proc adding to the thunder counter counter but I think they might have fixed that. Each thunder stack increases Thor's overall damage, not just his crit damage, but his damage 3% up to 30%. And then once the thunder counter reaches 10, does the Skyrupture ability where he does an AOE, does hit pretty hard, and then it resets back to zero. Here are the masteries, pretty much the same thing as Rathalos, counter attack, and then taking Helm Smasher. All right, a little fire and thunder today. Let's go ahead and drop them into Brutal. So here's the team. We've got Duchess for some extra survivability and to revive anybody. We've got heals and buffs coming from Padrig and Cardiel. We've got HP burn, decreased defense, weaken, and Hex coming from Venus. And we got our two boys here, our two big boys. So let's go ahead and see who's gonna be doing a lot more damage. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to point out every, cause there's so much that happens I'm gonna try and slow things down here. We'll do it one by one. All right, who goes first? I think let's place the decreased defense and weaken. And then we'll do this first. And then I'm gonna reset it and let it run full auto so we can get a more true uh, depiction. All right, so we have one, 119. I saw 119 there. Uh, let's do his AOE. We're looking at 101. All right, let's cycle through again, back to Thor. So we have the HP burns there, which means that um, Rathalos is gonna be able to do his thing. Now, whenever we do the Fulminous Ricochet, his A2, we first want to target the head that is weak. We're gonna hit weak on this anyway, so we want all the other heads to receive more damage. All right, so 198, 200 on that one over there. All right, Rathalos doing 61, I saw, okay. All right, and we saw that Rathalos Mastery proc in here because he's taking less damage. Now, this is the iffy thing here. We don't want to hit the reflect damage. That's the that's the weird thing here. Let's go ahead, 485. All right, let's see how much Thor does here, even with the ally protect on. 56, and then 49. All right, let's see it. 185, even with ally protect on from Thor. And then let's check Rathalos' A3. So he self buffs and then pumps it out. 111 here on the head that was uh, on fire from Rathalos. Let's slow this down. And 495. Okay, so we kind of have an idea. Those were some instances seeing the damage output from each champion. And you see that Rathalos is doing a lot better whenever HP burn is up. So what we're gonna do is we're still on Brutal. We're gonna throw it into the fight and we're gonna let this go full auto and when the fight ends i don't think this is gonna reach turn limit it's on brutal um but when it ends we'll see who did more damage over the long run i realized i forgot to do something with thor because he has a lot more crit damage on him i think i need to remove some gear off of thor thor did almost 30 million rathalos did 12 million by himself but let's change something here first let's look at thor he still has yeah Okay, so because he's got a lot more crit damage than Rathalos, it feels like he's just gonna be doing more damage off rip. Let's take off, I think if I take off the bottom three pieces of jewelry, then we might give Thor uh, a little bit of a debuff to better match Rathalos. And it's that's weird to, to think about and say, like, oh, I have to depower Rathalos, or I have to depower Thor to make him fit with Rathalos. But he's got a little bit less crit damage now, a little less speed, a little less attack, 
uh, a lot less defense, so we'll see. Let's go ahead and bring them into normal just to see what they do. Same team and everything, uh, but we'll, we'll just see what the difference is. I think they're going to last longer, but I think it's also going to give us a better sense of uh, overall damage output. Now that Thor has been depowered a little bit to better match Rathalos, and we don't have to worry too much about people surviving. But yeah, it's, it's amazing. Look at the damage. That that sky rupture is just crazy. I want to see what Rathalos is doing. Rathalos, I need you to, to hit hard, please. We got the HP burnout for you right here. And you hit that head. Okay, 42. Or 428. 583 coming from Thor. Okay, we've got all our buffs up. Increase damage. Increase attack. 212. All right, and here we are coming up to the end of this fight. Everybody's staying alive. We're about to hit the turn limit, and you can see that we're approaching 800 million. Um, it's just been a crazy fight. And look at that. That that swipe from Rathalos was just insane. Love to see it. All right, 739 million. So, surprisingly enough, Thor... And Rathalos weren't too far apart. I'm actually surprised by this. I thought Thor would blow him out of the water. but I, I mean, we did depower Thor. But still, like, that's pretty impressive an hour, la <laughs> an hour later. Um, yeah, 4 million difference. That's crazy. Uh, kudos. What do you guys think? Show you what my booty do. Boy, turn around. Let me hit it from the back. Yeah, no.